Oh, it's time for Media Watch now. James Creedon is here with us in the studio. Hi, Laura. Enjoying the air conditioning. Yes. <laughs> As we all are. Uh, we're going to start in Turkey, um, where um, Ekrem Imamolu has won the election for the second time in, what is it, five months? Yeah. <laughs> he is the mayor of Istanbul. That's right. It has now been confirmed. <laughs> a, a quick quip through some of the reactions on social media. Uh, and I think that the, the opposition that is coming back a lot in the headlines is Erdogan defeated, democracy Victory. Saved. Victory. Yes. Exactly. It's sort of, <laughs> there is an equation uh, going on there. And indeed, uh, the, the, the stunning success of Ekrem Imamoglu uh, uh, he's, has made him into a star, really, with a curiosity around the world about his profile. That's the Times of India there with a, a, an AFP profile on, on their website of him. And when you become the first person to win the Istanbul elections <laughs> nice. twice in a year, you know, that is, that is a record that is unlikely to be uh, beaten again, I think. The blow to Erdogan's image and prestige, the loss of Istanbul, will have practical political consequences for the Turkish leader. So indeed, it is being seen as a major blow to him. At the end of the day, the people want democracy. And that's quite a stunning photo there of the victor in that election with uh, people holding their telephones aloft uh, in the crowd uh, last night. Erdogan losing his grip has given these people hope again. So lots of images going up on social media, <laughs> images that you've been showing, of course, in the bulletin yeah. of, uh, of people uh, celebrating uh, that victory. This is one Reuters journalist who had spent many years covering uh, uh, Turkey. Uh, what is also quite mind-blowing are the results in Istanbul's traditionally conservative districts such as Uskudur, Eyüp and even Pius Fatih, which used to be AKP strongholds and they now voted for opposition's Imam Gul. You'd have to wonder to what extent that is down to the fact that they were forced to vote a second time. I think that can irk voters. Uh, might, yes, you know, yes, even yes, conservative yes, voters. Might have worked might. against them, might not it? Now, um, Erdogan did uh, react on, on Twitter, but it is the first time, Laura, in, in 17 years that he hasn't taken to the airwaves uh, after an election because the AKP is so uh, used to election victories, in mm. fact. So he, just a simple tweet saying that he acknowledged the result, if you like. And then uh, Ekrem Imamoglu on Twitter, uh, quite an interesting comment there. He said, you can stop the clocks, but you can't stop time. Istanbul has preferred justice and democracy. We'll finish with the... Uh, uh, lots of other tweets coming from politicians. This is uh, the European Parliament's Guy Verhofstadt. A new day dawns for democracy in Turkey. Uh, the European Parliament has always stood by democratic forces, etc. But I'll finish with this image uh, by a French cartoonist, Frédéric Mours, which sees Ouch. Erdogan getting a bit of a blow from the ballot box. And I think that image probably sums it up. OK, all right, let's move on to something else. Um, a horrendous murder case uh, in Ireland, yeah. which has also um, put the spotlight on the protection of minors online. Tell us more. This one has really kind of um, seemed to have gone through all of the major issues about, about the, how exposed minors are online to, to upset manipulation and otherwise. It was a, an awful murder case of a 14-year-old girl called Anna Kriegel. The two uh, convicted uh, murderers were 14-year-old boys themselves. It turns out, and it was a seven-week-long case that totally captivated the country, A, because of the horrific uh, cruelty involved in the murder. She was tortured, sexually assaulted, and then killed. Uh, they both proclaimed their innocence, the two boys in question. Uh, but on f she basically, the girl uh, was the victim of cyberbullying for, for quite, a quite a while, both on YouTube and also on social media. So there were a lot of questions asked as to whether or not something could have been done to intervene to prevent this from happening. Obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, it's, you know, 2020 vision and whatnot. But could something have been done to prevent this from happening? Because she was, she was vulnerable because she had been a target of bullying on social media. But then in the aftermath of uh, the, 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 the murder, uh, there was a sort of a witch hunt, if you like, to identify uh, the minors involved. Now, they're 14-year-old boys. They're protected by uh, by the Children's Act in Dublin, in Ireland, rather, that prohibits the identification of minors, as in most other jurisdictions. But people were trying to get around that, and they were the, the boys in question were being named and shamed on social media. Uh, and the, the Irish police were, uh, were, were saying they that they wouldn't investigate yeah. anyone sharing the photos. But, uh, but they actually named someone who had absolutely nothing to do with it. That's right. I um, it, it. That's right. So the two boys in question, the suspects who were then convicted, they, their information about them, photos and their identity was circulating online. But a third boy who had nothing to do with it. Completely innocent. Nothing and to so do with it. So you can see the extent to which it's, it's, it's very dangerous. Now, Mary McAleese, former Irish president, was one person who weighed into this debate, saying that social media must be reined in in this regard, that there's complete nihilism on social media. Uh, anarchy is prevailing there. Uh, uh, in other words, social media companies themselves need to take responsibility in this regard. No, and the first time and if they that, don't, they have to be pressure has yeah. to be put on them. Now, they did have mm -hmm. to take down, they were forced to take down uh, content related to this case. Uh, but whether or not the tricky issue of whether or not social media are publishers has been left for another day.
So it, it's that debate is really such a sad, debate. shocking story. Um, we've got 30 seconds left to talk about the heat wave. The heat How wave, are you preparing? Oh gosh, I have a fan. I have a fan <laughs> installed at home. But uh, it, you see, uh, there are a couple of corners of Europe that are spared, uh, and it, you don't have to search too far as to find out where they were. Now, a lot of people are kind of saying there's going to be a massive flight towards Brittany. Yeah. You even have satirical websites saying that Brittany is now putting up a border fence <laughs> yes. because they're afraid of climate climate, climate refugees. refugees. Funny <laughs> to. Prepared. <laughs> to a point and I thought it was quite funny coming back to the Irish media for a second that the island looks lovely and cool it looks lovely and cool they're talking about temperatures going as high as oh. 24 degrees oh perfect weather <laughs> are you feeling homesick a little bit <laughs> I actually wouldn't mind being a climate refugee this week oh no 40 degrees Laura we're going to suffer aren't we we are a bit keep the shutters and the windows closed they are already that's <laughs> alright James thank you very much Thanks, Laura. James Creed in there